So for this project, I'm going to be making a straight bar shoe, three-quarter fullet with a rolled toe. Well, most important thing is preparation. I've got the tools out that I need for this project. Okay, I'm using a smaller forging hammer. I'm not doing any big forging, so it's the fitter. I've got three eight tongs. I want them to fit. That's really important for accuracy. I've got uh, Mustard GDM Fuller, Stamp, Pritchell, I've got a ruler, and my dividers. So I've got my tools ready. Next thing is, I've cut the steel, I've marked the middle, and I've marked the outside edge two inches from each end. Because I need to establish where I'm going to bend my heels consistently. So for me, I've got a formula. For 16 inches of total length that you've calculated, I mark it two inches from the end. That will give me a proportionate heel width for the shoe. That is a formula. So if we go up an inch in total length, we go up a quarter with our mark at the heel. So if we went up to 17 inches, we'd go up to two and a quarter. If we went down to 15 inches, we'd go down to one and three quarters. So we've got a formula of total length to where we mark for the heels. When I start uh, making my shoe, I've got to have my method planned. The biggest inefficiency we can have is not knowing what comes next. And we can divide it down into heats, but I prefer to divide out of a section. So my first heat will be to bump the toe. My second heat will be to bend the toe. The third heat will be to hockey stick it. So to create half of my straight bar and to scarf it. The next heat, I'll bend the branch. The next heat, I will forge my other hockey stick or half a straight bar. Then I'll bend the branch. Then we'll weld it. And then it's a whole method of fullering. And for me, fullering is a, is a whole process, okay? I'm not going to talk about the process too much as we go along in this one because fullering is a lesson in itself, okay? It's got a series of steps that have to be followed to be able to make a repetitive quality. So the first thing we do, get a heat on the toe. It's a bit wider than where the toenails are going to go. I'm going to put about half an inch into the toe. Well, it's very important that we keep the bar straight when we're pumping. We want the energy going into the material, not being lost in the bend. Planning on a half inch. Yep. It's thinning down the inside edge. You've got to do it neatly, okay? You start leaving hammer marks and you're going to have to get rid of them. So my next step will be, I'll hold it just inside the two inch mark, put it just up inside the two inch mark, and I'll make my toe bend proportionate to that. A lot of time people end up with a bad toe bend because they hold it at the end, and they make a toe bend proportionate to the whole thing. We don't want a, we want a toe bend proportionate to the shoe that we're making, and that's the shoe that we're making. So next heat, we'll bend the toe bend, I start away from me, come towards me, set my toe quarters. And I always plan on the shape of the toe up that I want. We're not just making a, a bend. It's more work at the end if you, you don't end up making what you want. Uh, toe bend, never hit it too hard. 
lots of little overlapping blows and that's what will give you flow. And I work from two thirds to two thirds. I come back in at my toe quarter at one third. Same on the other side. Once I've got my toe basically done, now I'll set my toe quarters. What we can see is how strong this arm is, because at the moment of impact, I brace. Overlap my blows. I look for symmetry, I got this side that needs to come in just a little bit more. I work my back corner. I work, I, when I look at a radius, I see uphill, on the hill, and down the hill. I see my horn, uphill, on the hill, and down the hill. And that's how I work it, up, on, and away. And that helps reinforce the shape. Get a nice flowing shape. Overlapping all the blows. I mark my fullering. I place my fullering not just up the middle. It depends on the thickness of the hoof wall. If I'm shearing a carb, I want coarser nail holes. If I'm shearing a light warm blood. I want to have a slightly finer nail holes, so I place my fullering where I want it. Just on the outside of centre this time. So, we've had a bumping heat and a bending heat. Fairly efficient. Now, I'm going to bend my hockey stick. I'm going to bend my hockey stick to about 45 degrees. So I'll put it on the anvil at the two inch point. And I'll hit over and I'll bend it till it's about 45 degrees. 45 degrees is fairly good for a heel bend, okay, for a bar bend. Then I'll stack it back into itself. So I hold it in line with my bar is going to go. My hammer blow basically travels the same distance each time. It's my tongs that made the difference. I drive into it, and I'm trying to push this into the corner, and I'm going to drive it back about a third. Get the corner. What I'm always thinking about is the back of my bar being straight and my scarf being perpendicular to it. So straight, perpendicular. If you've got two like that, you don't need much of an overlap. The bar doesn't distort. A little bit of shape up. I push the corner forward because where it overlaps, that's going to be the point of my bar, and I scarf it. And I like a short scarf. Get a nice finish on it. Check it, bar perpendicular, we're good. Now I'll have a heat to bend it, then I'll repeat the same on the second side. Hold my tongs, I'm facing the direction my quarters are bending. Again, my hammer hits in the same place. I've got the heat, so I'm gonna hammer up the outside edge. Up the hill, on the hill, 
I'm down the hill. And we get a little bit of a flatten. While I'm here, I'll mark the fullering. Lots of overlap. Right, you and I take everything out. Nice square end, I lift up a little bit. And that's what gives my square end. Don't lift up too far, then it pushes out of the corner. It's lifted up just so it's onto the corner of the tool. So what we'll do now is we'll just give it a flatten. I'll work the outside edge while I've got the heat. Up to the quarters on the quarters and away from the quarters. So what I visualize is a line down the middle of my horn and I go up the hill, on the hill, down the hill. So, well we can see we got half the shoe made, or well prepared. We'll do the hockey stick, bend the branch, get the other side up to the same step. Holding the toe quarter, I put my two inch mark at the, the horn, bend it at 45 degrees, drive it back into itself about a third. Let's give it a little straighten up. Check my back of my bar, and this being perpendicular. Scarf it. I like short scarves. Clean up the edges. Check it one more time, yeah. So now I bend this, when I bend it, I want, I want my right hand side to come underneath the left. So when I weld it, I'm pulling them together, okay? Tongue position, my tongues are facing where this branch is bending. My hammer hits in the same place, my tongs make the shape. There you are, I've got them touching now. I'll hem the second branch. Up to the corner, over and away. Over my blows, give it a nice flatten. Mark it. And let's get the scarves overlapping now. We get the symmetry. Well, we can see our scarf is facing to the toe, so our end of it. We can see our scarf is facing to our toe. We want to get a small overlap, our two points line up. So now I've got to weld it. For me, the first few hammer blows are just sticking it. As soon as it's stuck, the next thing I'm going to do is remove the scarves. The scarves are very important to get in soon so that we don't have any traces of the scarves at the end. 
you spend all your time getting it down to thickness first, then you won't have space to get your scarves in. So I really focus on using the corner of my hammer to get rid of my scarves quickly. So what's important is bring it, when you uh, bring it up to temperature now, bring it up to red orange, then flux it. Don't flux it now at a black heat because then the flux has got to be on there and it's cooking all that time. If you get the shoe up to red orange, then put the flux on, then, you, then once it all equalizes in temperature, what's it, and remember what I'm saying, it equalizes in temperature. So the top of the scarf, the bottom of the scarf, and the middle of the, the weld are going to be all one color. If they're not one color, you're not going to weld. So, back in the fire. Just giving it a wire brush before I flux it. Back in the fire. Okay, what I'm looking for is that I've got an equal heat right the way through. That's where we're at right now. The top, the middle, and the bottom of the weld is all the same color, so I'm ready to start welding. First hit isn't too hard. Let's get it stuck. Now, corner my hammer into my scarf. Get my scarf welding. Turn it over, give it a second to reheat. Get the scarf in, and I get my scarf well in now. Picking away at it. I'm not worried about the thickness right now. I like the thickness. Got my scarf in. And what we can see now in one heat, I got my scarves disappeared. So my scarf has disappeared at this point. Now I can come back out, start flattening it and giving a shape up. A bit more flux. I like to pull the front of the bar down. I don't like the front of the bar thick because I want it to, I don't want it acting like a break. Straighten the bar up, shaping. Shaping my corners at the same time. clean and it forge flat. Come on. Oh, there you are. Two heats, and we've got our bar welded. This is what I was talking about. I like to pull the frog plate down so it's not thick on the front edge. So as it hits the ground, it doesn't stop the foot. So I like to see that pull down. I know some people use it as a skill test to leave it thick, but I think the practical it needs to be thinner at the front so it goes into the ground easier. The cold forging, putting a bit of a shine on it.
uh, what we're looking at. We had a two heat weld. And that's always my goal, is to weld it in as few heats as possible. I think two is a good goal. Now we'll have one heat per branch to just shape it up a little bit and to finish our fullering. And follow it. I don't hit it too hard because it blows apart. I prefer to go around more times. When I get to the end, I'm careful. Get a nice square end on it. Go in about two thirds. Work up the outside edge, get it nice and upright. Up to the quarters, over the quarters and away from the quarters. Flatten the hoof side. Really nice shine on it. Flatten the ground side. Give it a nice flatten. I like to compact the back of the holes. So I stamp it for the last time to crisp my holes up. Now my pretzel. The first time I didn't hit it too hard because it, it was cold here, so I let the will just take a little bit of heat first. So now just one more heat, finish the fullering, stamp it, nail hole it, give it a level. There's a little bit of a wire brush up. And it's planning what size nail you're going to put in the holes. I've got it two thirds done now. And around the outside edge. Clean it up, up to the quarters, over the quarters, and away from the quarters. Flatten the hoof side. Nice shine on it. We don't want to have to do too much wire brushing to get our finish. Now take our full ring down to full size.
should be fitting a ESL5 or concave 5, that's what I'm using mainly nowadays. So I've planned my nail. Good nail fit. I'll have one heat now to roll the toe and then we'll rasp it up. Well, we can see the shoe's nearly complete. Just that roll toe, that's all that's needed. Right, rolling my toe. I'm hitting into it. So I'm not spreading it too much. Okay, we'll give it a rasp up. Okay, we get the rest done, and then we'll look at the shoe. We've got a three-quarter fullet bar shoe, roll toe, straight bar. We've done it in about 11 heats. That's about optimum, okay? So we've done it in a minimum number of heats for this type of shoe. If you can save a couple of heats, that's good. But that's efficiency, taking out a couple of heats. Don't compromise quality. So learn how to build the steps and then get quicker. But it's heats is what you're thinking about. It's efficiency of heats.